introduced matchings in bipartite graphs. In this video, we'll show an important result from graph theory called Hall's Marriage Theorem. Now, in the last video, we found that if there is a matching in a bipartite graph with partitions A and B, then the size of the neighborhood of any subset of A will always be larger than that subset. Is the converse true? And this is something we kind of questioned at the end of the last video. Well, suppose G satisfies the matching condition, which is that the neighborhood of any subset S is always going to be greater than or equal to that set S, the size of that set S. For every subset of that partition A, and again, we have two partitions here, A and B, and this is a bipartite graph. So in this case, every set of vertices has at least as many neighbors than vertices in that set. Does that mean there is a matching? So again, this is the converse. Obviously, if there's a matching, you have to have this condition met. And we use the example with hist uh, students in history class picking to topics for their project. But what about the converse? If we know that's true, does that necessarily mean that there is a matching? And surprisingly, the answer is yes. The obvious necessary condition is also sufficient. This is a theorem first proved by Philip Hall in 1935. Hey everyone, real quick, I just want to mention that this video is a part of a whole course that I made. You can find a link to this entire course in the description below and make sure to click on that subscribe button. Hall's Marriage Theorem. Let's go through what it says exactly. Now it's important that Hall's Marriage Theorem came out in 1935 because that's actually really recent in mathematics. In mathematics history, in the history of mathematics I should say, 1935 is really modern. That's like, think about what was coming out in physics in 1935. Quantum theory, or the theory of general relativity, was first being understood around this time period. Hall's marriage theorem is really modern in mathematics. So what does it say? Well, let G be a bipartite graph. Then... Uh, oh, we need to, with sets A and B. Is that right? Yes. Then G has a matching. If and only if. And sometimes, by the way, I write if and only if using if with two f's. If and only if the size of the neighborhood of any subset S is at least as large as the size of that set S for all S in A. Now, I want to mention, I should be te technically correct here by saying with partitions, A and B, just to clarify what A and B represent within the, bi the, the context of the bipartite graph. But typically when you see someone talk about parts A and B with bipartite graphs, you can assume that those are those, um, those two sets where they're completely empty subgraphs. There are quite a few different proofs of this theorem. A quick internet search will get you uh, into the right area here. But in addition to its application to marriage and student presentation topics, matchings have applications all over the place. We're going to conclude this video with one example. So suppose you deal 52 playing cards into 13 piles of four cards each. Prove that you can always select one card from each pile to get one of each of the 13 card values, ace, two, three, jack, uh, 10, jack, queen, and king. 
Doing this directly would be difficult, <laughs> but we can use the matching condition to help. Let's construct a graph G with 13 vertices in the set A, each representing one of the 13 card values. So here's set A, and there are 13, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 vertices in that set. And then again, uh, each representing one of the 13 card values. And then we're going to do 13 vertices in set B. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 each representing one of the 13 piles. Now we're gonna draw an edge between vertex A in A to vertex B in B if a card with value A is in the pile B. Now notice that we're just looking for a matching of A, of the set A. Each value needs to be found in the piles exactly once. We will have a matching if the matching condition holds. Given any set of card values or a set S in A, and let me use a different color here. We must show that the neighborhood of this set is at least as large as this set. That is the number of piles that contain those values is, as least, is at least the number of different values. But what if it wasn't? Say the size of S was K. If the neighborhood of S, if all the edges coming out of that subset S goes into this subset, the neighborhood of S, if the size of that set, which I'll show as follows, if this is less than K, then we would have fewer than 4K different cards in those piles, since each pile contains four cards. But there are 4K cards with K different values. So at least one of these cards must be in another pile, which is a contradiction. Thus, the matching condition holds, so there is a matching required, and we've proven that we can always select one card from each pile to get one of each of the 13 card values, ace, two, three, and so forth. Anyways, thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.